My name is Michelle Naika, and I represent with my colleagues um, Africa Czech. I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves very shortly. But in two sen sentences, I thought it would be, be good for me to sum up what we do as Africa Czech in a very simple way. Um, we are the continent's leading independent fact checking organization. And what that means is that we want to tackle misinformation and make sure and ensure that the public has access to reliable sources of information. Um, I'm responsible for partnerships and engagements at Africa Check and my Anisha. Oh, um, I'm Anisha Bubulia and I'm the general manager of Trifex. Karina and I are in the same unit. Uh, we work together. Trifex stands for training, research, and information. So when you talk about, uh, Ms. Williams, as you talk, spoke about the needs that GCIS, this is where we come in. So we will be doing a short demonstration on how to actually fact check. Um, I'm Karina van Beek. Um, as Anisha mentioned, I'm um, working with her in Tripart um, as Head of Education and Training. So basically, I'm basically in charge of training not only media professionals um, in, in, in verifying um, facts, but also, also the public and raising awareness about how, how we can actually tackle uh, the spread of misinformation. Sure. So our presentation is pretty much um, covered over three segments. It's an overview of, of Africa Check in the first segment that just provides an overview of the organization, but at the same time tries to reaffirm the importance of accurate and reliable data in the public space and looks at ways in which we can improve the public trust on government data and government information and government communications. Um, the second area, the second element is Anisha giving us a background on Trifax. And then the last part is Karina that comes in to just give you a brief introduction to fact checking and some of the tools that's available freely for us to use in order to make sure that information is accurate and reliable when we, when we are publishing it. So our work is, is based on a simple premise that every single day people make decisions. Decisions that's based on healthcare, decisions that's on voting, on staffing, on budgeting, on buying a stock, on buying a government bond, people are making decisions. And they are making decisions based on the best available information to them at hand. But often, and our work is showing us that people are making decisions based on incorrect or inaccurate information. And that has become a threat to our democracy and the life outcomes of our people. So uh, our work is based on, on that simple premise that people make decisions and they need reliable information in order to make accurate, accurate information. <coughs> so the inaccuracies of data and misinformation can really start off as small niggles, but we're seeing how misinformation is causing much more havoc in society and social harm. And that's one of the areas in which, and health misinformation is one of the areas in which our organization was founded. So if I may share with you, I think um, my yeah. biggest concern is that I'm not sure whether they did get permission from you to record. Sure, no, it's fine. Yeah. Are you happy yeah. with that? We are fine. We are fine with that. <laughs> so organization was founded on a, on a health misinformation claim. In 2003, a group of religious leaders and politici political figures were misled to informing their followers or that um, you shouldn't vaccinate your children against polio because it was a Western-led plot to reduce the number of, of women and to make the, to, yeah, to reduce the number of, of children with uh, yeah, Muslim population. And it was a Western-led plot to, to pretty much re reduce that. Because it came from religious figures and leading public figures, it was widely believed as true. No fact-checking took place. And it spread rapidly. And as an organization, we saw the cases of polio between 2003 and 2007 spike up because of misinformation. And that undermined all our work and progress as in, a, in a development space. It's come to my attention that South Africa was deemed yesterday as a polio-free South Africa. But imagine if misinformation had to come up again, and how, much of, how could it undermine our work in terms of addressing, addressing polio? So that was 2003. And, and the spread of misinformation has really, um, it, it, it's, it's taken off even further because the proliferation of social media wasn't as it is today. So with social media, with WhatsApp, with Facebook, misinformation and fake news and misinfo yeah, misinformation and disinformation is spreading very rapidly and it's very difficult for us to control. So just a, a little bit about us. Um, 
We are a non-profit, Africa Check is a non-profit organization. We established in 2012. Our head office is based in Johannesburg at the WITS you know, Journalism Department. Um, and we have other offices based in Nigeria, Senegal, as well as Kenya. And we currently have over 30 staff that's supporting us in terms of fact-checking on a daily basis. Um, uh, currently, our website receives about 200,000 unique visitors. And we just clicked over 2 million uh, unique visitors since we, we started as an organization. We registered with the International Fact-Checking Network. And that means that we are audited on a on a, on a yearly basis regarding our nonpartisan to make sure that our fact checks and the claims that we check are nonpartisan and fair. We currently work with Facebook in terms of our third party fact checking to make sure that information on, on Facebook and social media are highlighted or inaccurate information is highlighted and red flagged and correct information is then um, reflected on social media. Um, one of the challenges we face as an organization is um, Misinformation spreads so fast, and the time we, s we do a fact check, the disaster and the harm is already caused. So as an organization, we have been looking and working with Google in terms of, of artificial intelligence and looks at how could we use artificial intelligence in order to pick up certain algorithms that would enable us to fact check faster so that people have access to reliable information quicker, which is the most important thing. Um, Trifex is our training wing. Um, and it's one of our strategies that if we can build the capacity of organizations and departments to be able to fact check and understand fact checking, then we'll be able to ensure that accurate information is more readily available to the public. Um, in our quest to, we can't do this alone and that's our understanding, and our quest to support our efforts, we've created an Africa Facts Network and therefore we're working with other fact checking networks across the continent and empowering them and capacitating other organizations to be able to support us in tackling this and disinformation. So yeah, the, the problem is quite complex. Um, it's, it's happening in different forums, for instance on WhatsApp, it's been one of our, a very difficult challenge because it's an encrypted platform whereby we, we are unable to move into that platform and see what's circulated. So the, the challenge is quite complex and our view and take on this that in order for us to take on a, a complex problem, we need partnerships. But most importantly, and important, equally importantly, is that we need a holistic approach in order to, to tackle misinformation. So our theory of change is, is quite simple. Um, there's a few activities that we take on as an organization. Is it a bit blur? That's not very good. Okay, I'll, I'll read it. I'll just, okay, cool. So these are, in terms of the activities we partake on as an organization, the first one is we fact check claims made by public figures and the media and we liaise with them to correct where it is false. So that's our first, first activity. And it's very important for us as an organization to proactively seek out corrections because our work shows us that when a correction comes from a place where it was incorrect, it's more likely to, believed, to be believed and, and, and taken seriously. So it's very important for us to seek corrections from people who are putting out misinformation the second area that we work on is it, we encourage, we train, and we mentor media to carry out fact-checking um, themselves. Um, you may know the state of the media at the, at the moment in terms of generalizations of the newsrooms, and fact-checking is something that needs to be improved in that area. So therefore, we work and we mentor with me media houses and different departments and, and communications who are involved in communications to be able to fact-check themselves. We create fact-checking tools and accurate data on key topics. So on our website, for instance, we have, which Karina will speak about a bit later, we have tools such as InfoFinder that provide access to reliable information and sources um, of information on there that the public can access um, and be able to yeah, find reliable information. Uh, we work with social media, as I mentioned, in terms of Facebook, Twitter, um, just to highlight um, any um, red flag information and to be able to highlight the correct information. And the last area which we, we're moving towards and we, we hope that we can grow within the next year is to work with young children and schools. Because 
in terms of parting fact-checking skills amongst young children. And we feel that that's an important skill in terms of the fourth industrial uh, revolution for young children to be able to fact-check and to critically think about the content and the media that they are consuming. So we are moving in towards that space. And we believe that if we are able to do these activities successfully, that we will be able to st uh, strengthen our democracy and life outcomes and improve the better decision making. So government is seen as a trusted source of communication. I mean, when government speaks, we tend to we listen and we take that information and we, make, and we base our decisions on a lot of that. Nonprofit organizations use it, businesses use it, policy makers, journalists, all view government as credible sources of information. So I'm just going to show you a few cases of, of how misinformation um, can be harmful. This was a campaign, a recent um, campaign that was done by Cadbury's. Um, South Africa has 3.7 million orphans uh, base, uh, based. Yeah, South Africa has 3.7 million orphans. <coughs> we checked that claim, called Cadbury. Cadbury, where did you get this figure from? And they were very reluctant to give us this figure. We dug deeper and we managed to pick up that this statistic of 3.7 million orphans was reflected in UNICEF's, um, the United Nations UNICEF's report and their website. We called UNICEF, UNICEF, can you tell us more about how you came up to this statistic? Uh, people are using it, marketing campaigns are, are going viral based on this. UNICEF told us that this was a, um, it was a report, an outdated report that was waiting to be changed on their website, and the research was there, but uh, it, the website simply wasn't updated. But the, in fact, the, the correct figure was 2.3 million orphans when we looked at the general household survey. And that's a big discrepancy. And what was interesting to note was that this campaign went so viral that the Western Cape MEC was using this figure in order to influence policy, uh, I think it was a Children's Act policy or adoption, advocate for changes in adoption mm -hmm. policy. So you could see how discrepancies such as this is, you know, is, causing, is causing harm. This was another one, um, and I'm sorry for picking on the United Nations, um, but this was another one, um, malaria kills a child every 30 seconds in Africa. Um, again, this was outdated information, simply the new research was there but wasn't uploaded on the website, and therefore it was used you know, in terms of advocating. But in this case, it was undermining our progress in the development space because a child dies every two minutes, not every 30 seconds. But therefore, it's, it's telling people that we are not doing enough. And when in fact, we're doing enough, it's just that the information is not updated. This was an interesting one, the recent one, the femicide um, in South Africa and, and the hype that we had around it. Uh, <coughs> what came out of this was that a, a woman is murdered every four hours. But our work has picked up that that data was incorrect. Uh, and when we looked at it again, a woman is in fact murdered every three hours and every four, uh, in the rather than every four hours. And again, it's, it's in terms of advocating on the urgency of such a matter, it, it downplayed, uh, downplayed it. It was very important. And there's many, many other examples that we, we looked at. For instance, the recent xenophobia um, incidences that we had recently, um, for instance, this video, there was a video by the previous former police deputy minister, and it said that uh, Joburg and the surrounding areas, or Hillbrow and the surrounding areas, was occupied by nearly 80% of foreign nationals. And, and it went viral at the time when there was hostile conditions in South Africa. Um, we have no evidence to suggest that that was the case, but it, went, it, was, it was gone viral. Um, for instance, um, crime stats, Becky Kelly used um, um, this one, sorry, the dubious UN standards for calls for 60,000 more offices. Again, was a statistic that was picked up from the United Nations and reported, but it was a statistic that Becky Kelly and team were using in order to inform police staffing. Completely incorrect as well. Um, and then the other one recently we did, South Africa is, uh, it was a claim that South Africa is the only country that has crime statistics not the case, there's many other African countries that are reporting crime statistics. But it's just, it's just a highlight of how public trust on, on certain communications can be broken if we put down inaccurate information. And also to think about where we're accessing information as well in terms of, of our... So these are just some of the things that I've highlighted, for instance, 
um, on the number of orphans, Western Cape MEC was using those figures to, you know, to change the South African Adoption Policies and Children's Act. In terms of the UN figures, police minister was using it in order to look at staffing and budgeting purposes. So these are just some key ways in which we could possibly and low-hanging fruit that we could work together on in terms of, you know, just to make sure that accurate data and new research should be readily available and accessible on government websites. So what is the time we have research and what is the uh, and information and what is the time and the time lag that we have that is uploaded on websites and accurate information is updated. Um, all data should include the date of the publication and sources which should be clearly visible. Um, for me, the most important one is that when there is a mistake or misinformation is represented, we should offer a public correction because it just builds public trust towards the department or towards, towards government, but at the same time, it also, like I mentioned, people are more likely to believe, believe it from the source who has changed it recently. Um, so these are just some of the ways in which we can work together. Obviously, capacity building and training is something that's important that we feel that we'll be able to support the uh, department with in terms of making sure that uh, fact-checking is something that's rooted in, in, in things. So in terms of, yeah, it's, it's really a complex problem, um, but we feel that we can work together and we have more people who <coughs> are able to foster a culture of fact-checking um, across the country, we'll be able to address the problem. and. So that's the first part. Um, I'm not sure if there's any questions now, or would you like to take it at the end? So we offer paid for services to individuals. So you don't have to be a me you don't have to have a media background. We work with media organizations, so we offer training. We work with political parties. We work with government, corporates, universities, schools. Right. Uh, Actually, we are the leading um, fact-checking and verification organization or we, across the continent, right? And then we also do research. So say, for example, if anyone has, we do commissioned research. So if you'd like us to verify your a simple thing like a press release or your annual reports or something, we actually go through that and we verify all the information that is in there. And the information that we use is in the public domain. So it's not something that it gets uh, thumbs up, right? Um, that's there, that's us again. So with our training, we have like basic fact checking and we have master classes. So say for example, if you're looking at numbers, so once you've done your basic fact checking workshop uh, training, we go on to master classes. So you could do education, you could do finance, you can do crime stats. So we offer that as well, right? Um, if GCI has a certain brief that they would like us to use, we would actually ta tailor the program according to your needs. We have fellowship and mentorship programs. So we're going to be doing a program for the MDDA in the next three weeks. So the one component would be an intensive boot camp workshop, and then we have a mentorship program for them. So they have almost like a three-month mentorship program where we do uh, Skype interviews, we do emails, uh, so that they actually understand, they go back to their workplace. Sometimes in the class you think you've actually grasped the concept, but when you go back to your workplace and say, I'm not so sure this works, uh, so we have that to and fro communication. Uh, we get funded for fellowship programs, so we bring fellows from the continent, from South Africa, um, so we do it in French and we do it in English. They come, they spend about three weeks in our offices where they work with our editorial team and they go under intensive training on fact checking. <coughs> and a lot of them have their reports published on our website. Then we, have, we work with universities. Um, Karina is in the process of uh, developing online curriculum. Um, and um, like we're talking, so it will be blended learning. So we'll have online as well as face-to-face -face training. Uh, we've just done a program with um, SIA, um, uh, it's called Model UN, and there were about, I think, 500 students that took part on a Saturday where they represented different countries. So they uh, simulate the actual um, um, UN um, assembly, and each country has topics that, and uh, papers that they've got to submit, and then they debate. So what we do is we train students to actually be fact-checkers. 
they go into, they listen to the debate, they listen to the uh, submissions of the papers, and they verify information. So this is the second year that we've actually done it. Uh, what happens is get, um, from the comments from the uh, students that we train, they were actually so impressed and they said they never ever thought of looking at research or work this way. So the, the, the thing is we want our kids to actually become critical thinkers, mm -hmm. not just have their tunnel vision. So that's what we'd like to do. We hope to work with the Department of Basic Education in actually mm -hmm. developing modules uh, for schools. So we look at cyberbullying, we look at internet mm -hmm. security, we look at actual fact checking. And um, research was, uh, sorry, I know, I'm, but, but while I'm talking about the school program, you find that a lot of schools have like a media program. And they were saying that kids that are part of this program actually excel. You don't only have to go into journalism or into media studies, but in any field that you go into or which they career choice that you have, they actually excel in that particular field. So I think it's actually a very important skill because if you look at most kids, everyone has a smartphone. And what we're trying to teach them is pause, think before you actually share. Um, right, so we offer research. Like I said, if you've got anything that you'd like us to verify, um, we actually do that. That's commissioned research. And we have independent researchers. It is not part of our editorial team. It is a trifex project, that's what we <coughs> do. Um, right, uh, we host seminars and we present on panel discussions and round tables. Uh, the main reason that we actually have events is we want to raise our profile. So we had one in partnership with Ipsos just before our elections. We had um, <coughs> uh, representatives from the three major parties, our parties. And um, so, uh, Africa Check actually presented <coughs> on the actual facts and Ipsos on perception. So the next one we're hosting is hopefully on the 13th of November, and our topic is education. So uh, we hope you'll all be there. Uh, then we've got our Africa um, uh, Fact Checking <laughs> Awards, right? Uh, we encourage journalists to submit their articles. It goes through a various process where it's adjudicated, mm -hmm. not by the Africa <laughs> Czech team, but we have judges from across the continent. So we have one for the best um, fact check report, a runner up, and then we have a university, any uh, university students that have actually written reports or articles, they get, um, I mean, so that's also across the continent. So this is what we said. I, we, I just wanted to show you a graph of how we've actually grown. So we hope to reach our target of 4,000. That would be training as well as presenting. Uh, these are a few of our clients. We are funded. Um, yeah, so we hope, uh, I've got GCIS. We actually did a workshop for communicators last year. <laughs> and these are just some of the comments from our uh, delegates that attend. Some of our pictures, we've done quite a few workshops in Nigeria on elections. We did one in Namibia right, uh, last month. So when elections come up, we try to train <coughs> uh, journalists and fact checking. And that's our model UN program. Right, and I'll hand you over to Karina to do a little exercise. But we're just going to connect to the internet. Right? <coughs> Hang on for you.